Today, I'll show you how I check repeater coverage, windlink coverage, and APRS coverage before ever hitting the road so I'm never caught off guard. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. This morning, I was doing a little bit of trip planning before taking off to Chattanooga for an upcoming ham fest. And I thought you guys might like to see exactly what goes into that planning. Now, we're not going to cover the actual road trip itself, uh, the time that we're traveling on the interstate. In those cases, I'm typically running 5.2 Simplex and Voice Alert on APRS. If you don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to Voice Alert, I'll leave a link to that video down in the description below. But basically, what I'm researching today is going to tell me exactly what's available once I get to my destination. And this doesn't have to be going to a ham fest. This could be any destination that you're going to, or maybe you might even want to look for services that could potentially be available if you're going to help out after a natural disaster. But let's go ahead and jump over to the laptop and get going. All right, so since this is a HemFest that I'm going to be attending, the first thing I'm going to do is go over to the HemFest website. And I've already come over here to the Chattanooga Amateur Radio Club site. Gives you all the information you need about the HemFest itself. But if we scroll down to the very bottom here, you can see that they give us a repeater right here that's going to serve as the talk-in repeater. They also let us know that this is an all-star node and an echo link node. And this is just the first bit of information that I'm going to make a note of. Now, in addition to looking up this information, I always have repeater book that's available to me on my phone for these trips. But let me show you guys one other trick that I like to use. Let me grab a blank page here and I'm just going to search for Orlando uh, Ham Radio Club. Let's go ahead and plug that in and you'll see right here, O-A-R-C. We'll go ahead and click on that, and that's going to bring us up to the Orlando Amateur Radio Club. So if I was planning a trip to Orlando, I'm also going to look at club websites in that particular area. In this case, let's come right here to Club Tech, I believe it is, and we've got the CFL repeaters. If we click on that, you can see that this radio club gives us a lot of information about various repeaters in their area. So you can see right up here, they've got a couple of fusion repeaters and then a whole host of D-Star repeaters. And if you look, you can even see over here that some of these, it looks like that one might be reserved just for digital voice, where this one here is reserved just for data. And then if we scroll on down, they give us a whole long list of other repeaters in that area. So just another thing you might want to do if you're planning to go to a specific location, look up and see if there's any ham radio clubs there and what information they might have on their website. One other resource you might want to utilize is actually APRS.fi. Now I'm zoomed in pretty much exactly where this HemFest is going to take place. It's roughly right over here in this area. And you can see that we have three different repeaters right here on the APRS map. If we click on any one of those, it should give us a bit more information about that particular repeater. You can see that this one is on 146.715 with a tone of 67. This is also an all-star node and it gives you the node number and it gives us a website where we might could get some information. So I can see clearly that that is a two repeater two meter repeater. If we take a look at this one, that's going to be a 220 repeater. And then let's take a look at that last one there. And that's a 440 machine. So a couple of different ways that we can get information about repeaters before we ever hit the road. Now let's talk for a minute about Winlink because Winlink is one of those systems that if I can get away with using a two meter machine or a 440 machine, if I've got access to those, I would rather use those than trying to do Winlink over HF, primarily because it's going to be faster for me to get my emails or to send an email if I've got the availability to do that over two meters. So again, I'm zoomed in roughly to where this uh, HemFest is going to take place. I believe on this map, it is right there. Now, this website is winlink.org forward slash RMS channels. 
Again, I'll leave a link in the description below. Once you get to this page, you do want to make sure that you select whatever type of station you're looking for. In my case, I'm looking specifically for packet stations because that works well with the equipment that I've already got installed in the truck on a full-time basis. So once I zoom in and I make sure that I'm on the packet, now I can start to get information about possible packet gateways in this area. So once you get to this map, you can simply come to one of these bubbles and click on it. It will give you all of the information that you need to be able to access this particular gateway. So you can see right here that it's on a frequency of 145,750 and it is operating in packet 1200. Now, another thing to know about using this site, you'll notice all of the dots on here right now are green. If you see one in yellow, that means that it has not reported to the CMS servers in the last few hours. And then after it goes a little bit more time without reporting, that bubble will actually turn red before it eventually drops off the map altogether. So a little bit of information here on this map that will let you know if you're going to have coverage in the area that you're traveling to. Now, the final thing that I want to check is, am I going to have APRS coverage in the area that I'm going to? So again, we're back on the map that you saw a while ago with the three repeaters right here. Again, guys, this is APRS.FI. We are going to be roughly right here where this little red car is located. And if I take a look around, I can see that this Digipeter right here. Let's click on that real quick. Yep, that is uh, Westview APRS Gateway and iGate. So I can see that that is probably the closest Digipeter to this area, but we can dive a little deeper into this to see if it's actually going to cover this particular area right here. We can do that by going up and clicking on this info button right here. And once we click on that, that's going to bring you into this screen. What we want to do is we want to come to right here where it says show the map. Uh, you'll notice that it's heard 55 radios over RF. Now, let's go ahead and click on this show the map again. And that's going to give us a heat map. So you can see, let me close this right here. You can kind of see the coverage area of this particular Digipeter. And remember, we're going to be right here in this little area. And I believe we're going to have some pretty good APRS coverage for this ham vest. Now, is all of this a bit over the top? Eh, maybe, but it's something that I like to do before hitting the road. If you found today's information educational, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.